He says flips me inside out For the Bible tells me so Little ones to them belong They're buried but he is strong Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me The Bible tells me so Amen. Isabella Escarino. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I just want to invite everybody and thank everybody for listening to us online and uh, on our YouTube, and we are going to be putting some more up. I just want to thank uh, the Lord for a beautiful, beautiful, wonderful day today. Um, the sun is shining, and uh, Sometimes it may be a little hot, a little bit hot to, for my taste, but you know what? Hey, whatever he gives us, I'll take it. Praise God. Um, I'm coming to you today. It's June the 7th of 2020. Um, just to let everyone know before I get started on the message that uh, June 14th uh, of uh, the 220 is we're going to uh, be opening up the church um, and we ask that if you would come about uh, 1030 so we can get people in and seated and ushered in. We're trying to take the precautions what the CDC wants us to do and we are going to before the message and before we sing I'm going to go over some guidelines that uh, we need to go uh, and talk to each and everyone so because we're concerned about everybody's safety. And we just please, if you have a face mask, please bring one. If you do not have a face mask, we will provide one for you. All right, well, let's get into the message. And I always have, and it's, it's the storms of life. And it's ironic that what we're facing today is a storm ourselves. And it brings me to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through chapter 5, verse 1. And I always love a story, so I want to share with you in this message about the perfect storm. When the Andrea Gale from Clouser Harbor in Massachusetts on October 1991 and headed into the North Atlantic, no one could have known that this fishing boat would never be seen again. Only a bit of debris was found, and the six crew members that was aboard vanished forever. In his book, the Perfect Storm, author Sebastian Junger immortalized the fate of the Andrea Gale. A film followed featuring George Clooney and Mark Wahlberg, but the stars, as big as they are, played only a supporting role. The real star of the film was the storm itself, a terrifying, relentless oppressor born of fierce winds and mountainous waves. It was the meteorologist who named this chasmic tempest the perfect storm. It is just a way of saying the worst case scenario is in the case of the Andrea Gale. It was the toughest weather conditions possible. Three deadly elements gathered in October 1991. First of all, there was a front moving from Canada toward New England and a high pressure system building over Canada's east coast and the time remnants of Hurricane Grace. All of them turning along the eastern seaboard of the United States. Strong weather was coming from three of the four points on the compass and all of it covering on the Andrea Gale. The last radio transmission of Billy Tyree Jr., the captain of the fishing boat, came at 6 p.m on October 28, 1991. He reported to the captain of his sister ship saying, she is coming on boys, she's coming on strong. The popular book and movie brought the term perfect storm in the common use and the concept is as old as humanity. People have already had to deal with the multiple rough circumstances. But however, today in our fast, more crowded, and more complex world, a few little squalls can come quickly and they can come a perfect storm. 
with the multiple conditions and conversions that threaten critical areas of our lives, such as finances, relationships, jobs, and even health. We question, how much more can we endure? There is really no better term available to describe what we are going through right now. This is the ultimate perfect storm. We are in the midst of a storm, and it is a very hard not to feel the clutches of fear that accompany the serious storm inside the Andrea Gale. That demonstrates two kinds of fear that we all experience. The first is that gut-level adrenaline and drenching fear that the crew felt in the midst of the storm. They were afraid because their lives were on the line. This kind of fear is beneficial, and it is necessary instinct for survival. But there is another kind of fear that can mobilize us completely, that the fear of fear itself. In the midst of the storm, it is instinctive beneficial fear of a storm that could happen. We need perspective on life that takes into account the perfect storm. But also reassures us that there is a safe harbor within reach. That's where Jesus Christ comes in as, as we follow Him as we become His disciples. Our troubles look different in the light of His goodness and His power and His wisdom. So what do we do when the perfect storm comes into our life? How do we manage when the winds blow against us? Well, uh, number one, I want to tell you the probability of storms in our lives. So let us hear from the life of Jesus is a perfect storm experience that will help us understand how we can deal with the storms that we are facing right now. Our lesson begins in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 37. And it says, On that same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with them. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. So let's, let's picture it. It was evening, and Jesus and his disciples were exhausted from a full day of ministry. It was Jesus' decision to cross from Caprium to the other side to the Sea of Galilee is the only way he and his disciples could, could get away from the crowd. It tells us that Jesus was near exhaustion and his 12 disciples were reeling from vigorous training. Jesus and his disciples were overwhelmed by the people. They were, because of the people were craving his healing touch and they were flocked to Jesus on every street. Now Jesus was speaking near the Sea of Galilee and the, and the crowd was beginning to press into so hard he was almost shot back into the water. And he climbed into the boat and pushed out a few feet. And he sat down and continued to teach, according to the verse in Mark chapter 4. By the time Jesus was finished, it was evening. Desperately needing rest, Jesus and the twelve simply remained in the boat and set sail for the other side. Jesus was to minister the next day, and the elements of the perfect storm was gathering. If any of you ever researched the Sea of Galilee, you will find out when the storms arose, they can be terrifying. And the Sea of Galilee is shaped kind of like a bowl nestled about 720 feet below sea level, and the storms would pop up at any time. And the cool mountain air was like a funnel. And when the winds picked up with the warm water and the cool of the mountain air, storms would arise very quickly. And that is just what happened that day. So let us look in Mark chapter 4, verse 37. The Bible says, A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. The storms which arose on this particular day could be described as a fierce squall. Mark's gospel uses a Greek word for the windstorm that is translated hurricane. 
in the Gospel of Matthew, he describes the storm as a great seismos, a earthquake in the middle of the lake. In the shaking of the wind and in the boat, the storm was so violent that the waves were breaking over the boat in which Jesus was with his disciples and it was filling up with water and their hearts were also filling up with fear. Jesus, as sudden, just as sudden storms are inevitable on the Sea of Gal Galilee can pop up in our own lives. Church, our hearts were filling up with fear as well when the coronavirus, when it crept into our lives. The new normal that we took for granted was suddenly taken away. The fear gripped our hearts as well. So we can really trans or understand what the disciples were feeling on that day. So number two, I'd like to share what is the paradox of the storm in our lives. Here it is interesting thought from the story of this time in their lives. The disciples were just following Jesus. There they were being tossed up and down by the storm and in danger of drowning. They were in the middle of the storm. God's perfect will and they were in the middle of a perfect storm all at the same time. They were about to learn a priceless lesson as we. That is, in the storm are not always a punishment for lack of obedience. The disciples were not in the storm because they they done nothing wrong. They were in the storm because they were doing something right. Not all the times that storms come when everything is going wrong in our life. There's sometimes storms come is when we are doing something right for Jesus Christ those men were there because they had jumped into the boat when Jesus said let's go so they went so there's the paradox they did not do anything wrong they were just in the midst of a storm and some people would say how does that work well the first was the probability of storms in our lives now the second was the paradox storms in our lives now let's look at the third it is the presence in the storm of our lives. And we see that in Mark chapter 4, verse 38. But he said, but he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. They awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? See, the disciples did not yet learn who Jesus truly was. If they had recognized and realized the full power and his authority that he held, they would have laughed and shouted at the wind in the midst of the storm. There was a presence. Some people need to believe in the power of God. This was the crisis the disciples faced. They knew Jesus was, was there, but apparently they still did not realize that he was God, God himself. They were totally unaware they did not know that Jesus could do and would do. They knew God could take control over the winds and the sea. They had not yet come to believe that Jesus, our rock and our redeemer, was God in the flesh. They knew and heard stories of Moses and the Israelites crossing the Red Sea, how they knew that God could take control over the wind and the sea. But was that the same God with them here and now? They did not realize that Moses' is God, their master, was one and the same. They did not understand that they had Emmanuel, God with us, in the boat. This is the only time in the Bible we are told that Jesus slept. And he did it in the midst of a storm. So that night on the Sea of Galilee, exhausted, Jesus slept on a cushion in the rear of the boat with the waves crashing all about him and his disciples the disciples was in despair for their lives so we have to understand no matter what's around us and going on with this coronavirus we have the lord and the almighty god as savior that he is going to continue to help us and watch over us in the midst of our storms. He's walking right beside us. He takes our hand and walks with us. And number four, that's why we come to the peace in the storm of our life. 
Verse 39 says, When he arose, he rebuked the winds and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Mark tells us that Jesus rebuked the winds just as a parent rebukes an unruly child. As, he dealt, as Jesus dealt with demons in the same way. When he rebuked them, just like he rebuked the wind. Jesus showed them his incredible display of power. So the twelve should have no remaining doubt in their minds as who Jesus truly was. But in the Old Testament, the Bible says God has the power over nature. And let's look at what the psalmist says that was wrote in 89.9. You rule the raging sea when the waves arise. You steal them. Knowing what we're going through, church, he, st- he calms the seas. The rough waters, it, it, it's looking far ahead that we can't look into the future, but God can. God will continue to rule our lives if we will Him to do so. And the psalmist goes on in 93.4, The Lord on high is mightier than noise of many waters, than, many, than the mighty waves of the sea. So even as we are going through a storm right now, the Bible still reminds us that Jesus is peace, is everlasting. And I urge you today, if you don't know Jesus' is peace, you need to accept Him as Lord and Savior. And the Gospel of John goes on on chapter 14, 27. It says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Church, the peace that Christ gives banishes fear and the dread from our heart. From Jesus is the control of all of our circumstances. He said He'll never leave us or forsake us. He is even the boat in the boat with you right now, as He was with His disciples on that day out on the Sea of Galilee. Though we may not know and understand of the circumstances this coronavirus brought on us, but we know that who holds our future. And we are still reminded in the book of Psalm of 107.29, He calms the storm so that its waves are still. That's what Jesus did in that story. He first brought peace to the circumstance around His disciples before He calmed their hearts. Our Heavenly Father is kind and patient with us. When the storms of life overwhelm us, and fill us with anxiety. We have experienced some of that in the recent days, haven't we? He shows us His power even when we are being, beginning to wonder if He is asleep or absent. When our cries to Him for help and doubt creeps in, not knowing Jesus will give us, knowing that the Jesus will give us the courage to face whatever storm comes our way. I love this saying that Dr. David Jeremiah says, Peace is not the absence of stress. Peace is the presence of the Savior. And that is so true today. As we all know, as we serve the mighty King, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, He gives us that peace. Knowing the coronavirus that gripped the people and that grips them with fear. And we should not allow the, the media or Uh, circumstance that's going around us because James always reminds us count it all joy in our trials and our tribulations well this is a tribulation we are going through and some of you are are probably having fear which is understandable but we need to stand on the promises of Jesus Christ it's important for us church to, to, to be unified and strengthened in this time not to be shaken Because Christ is with us. He's in our boat. He's our Savior. Just as the Bible says, He's our rock, our our refuge, and our Redeemer. God is everything. And we need to share that with others, even though instead of going in and scurrying about every day and of our lives, going out and getting our, our products that we need and our food and whatever it may be, you know what? We can still share the love of God, even if we have to fa- wear a face mask or gloves or whatever it may be. We have to remember that, church. God is in your boat. 
Number five, let's look at the purpose of the storms in our lives. The question is in the back of many of our minds. Did Jesus bring about the storms? Or just so he could build his disciples' faith? No, he did not. He had no need to create new storms to demonstrate his true nature. Because this fallen world stirs up enough storms, as we can see. I see no other purpose than to catch some needed rest. Because storms in the fallen world cuts us down to size, causes us to fear what we cannot control. Jesus uses storms in our lives to demonstrate His power and His strength to build our faith in Him. Psalms 19, 67, and 71 says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep Your Word. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn Your statutes. Church David is saying, God uses the afflictions in our life to bring me back to a relationship with Him. You know it is so easy to get comfortable with our faith and allow circumstances of life to get in our way. We go on with the busy work of, of life and family and enjoyment of sports and all the things that are a part of us and that suddenly and God who desires to be the center of our life is barely on the radar of our life. We should take this time that we may have to draw closer to God. The Bible says that if we draw near to God, God will draw near to us. In this time, we have to understand we got to draw near to God. And some of you may be listening via uh, YouTube or we need to draw. Maybe you left the Lord and you've walked away from Him and your fear, and, your, and, and you've got despair and creeping in on your life, that's the enemy. He wants to drag you further and further deeper in the depths of the sea. But I got news for you. Jesus will calm the storm. His purpose for you, He has more purpose for you than He cares for the sparrows and the birds of the air. Let's look at number six, the product of the storms in our life. And we, let's look at verse 40 and 41. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let's notice Jesus a lot gentler with the disciples than he was with the wind. Jesus only asked his disciples, why are you so fearful? And how is it you have no faith? These, with these questions, Jesus revealed a spiritual truth, and that is, faith breeds confidence, fear breeds unbelief. Kind of sounds like us, doesn't it, in this time, in the turmoil that we're going through. Job certainly, job lost, we don't know. But we have to be confident in the Word of God. And also in times in our own life, if we are truly honest with ourselves, we truly don't understand the true deity of God, who He truly is. He is the creator of the world. He created the heavens and the earth and the universe before we were ever created. That's why we should get on our face before Him and ask for, our, for forgiveness and draw closer to Him. It's important for us, church, to do so. It is important for us to take this time to draw near to God. Not to just watch TV. Not to do things and complain about this or get on the Internet and, and, and complain and blog and vent. What we need to do is open up the Word of God and draw close. That when we could feel His presence, when we open that Bible that you can feel His hand extend from ha heaven, wrap it around you, and you can feel His love and Him speaking to you. That's how we're really truly going to understand who God truly is and who He says He really is. If we're not going to take the time to get to know Him, 
He's not just going to keep bugging you and bugging you. He wants to have that relationship with you, even in this time of trouble. So we need to draw near to God today. Hallelujah. And the last, the promise for the storms of our lives. And I got a couple of, a few things I wanted to headline. It says, God's word ensures us of a safe landing. In Mark chapter 5, verse 1 says, Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadareans. Also, God's word alerts us of stormy seas. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 says, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. John 15, 20 reminds us that remember the word that I say to you, a servant is no greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will also persecute you. And we know that being a Christian in this day and age, this world is not kind. We get persecuted. And many of you today might have been being persecuted by family members or somebody at work or co-workers, whatever it may be. Let's, I just want to encourage you to continue to, to rely on God and anchor more and more to God. God's Word also announces that the Savior is on board. Psalms 46, 1 through 3 says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters roar and be trouble, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Selah. Kind of sounds like today. The waters roar. The mountains, it feels like it could carry us into the sea. And everything's shaking around us, not knowing what the uncertainty is. But I, got, I, I just want to tell you, and, and, and encourage you that Christ, this is not taking him by, by he, you know, we, we feel in our lives that this takes God by surprise, but it doesn't. He's not up there biting his nails. He knows. He's just wondering if his sheep hear his voice. He's wondering if we are going to continue to seek him first in his kingdom. That is, the, that is the key to getting through the storms and His will be done. And last, God's Word affir affirms us that the ship is in good hands. And we read that in Mark 39 again. When He arose, He rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And in closing, there's a lot of us don't really don't even understand what the peace of God means. The peace of God gives us everlasting and eternal life. The peace of God helps us through these storms that we're facing and the assurance that we will be with Him one day. And I want to invite whoever it is that they don't know the Lord. Or even if you've got away from God and got out of church, I just... You know, I just, you don't have to have a master's of how to get back to the Lord. I, I just want to share this, this simple prayer with you. And if, if you would, wherever you're driving or whatever you're doing today, I want you to say this, to rededicate your life and dedicate your life to the Lord. Dear Lord, I'm a sinner. I need you. I know that you died for my sins and was rose on the third day. Lord, I want you to come into my life and make it all anew. Lord, I want to love and live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, you're a new creature in Christ. And I urge you, I urge you, that if you don't have a home church, come and join us June 14th at Lansing Calvary Assembly of God at 3006 West Jolly Road in Lansing. We would love to have you. We would be love to wrap our loving arms around you, pun intended, 
and just to show you the love of God and help you build a relationship with Jesus Christ. I thank you for today that you hope to listen and this inspires you through this storm that we're going through, that it's only for a short time. So I want to pray for each and every one that whatever storm and whatever thing goes into your life today, that God will renew you and that you will draw close to Him, anchor to Him more and more each of this day of the uncertainty. But we know who holds our future. Our gracious, loving Father, we come to You, Lord, today. Thank You for this beautiful day You set before us. Thank You for each and every one that comes in the house of God that You minister to. Lord, we thank You, God, for all that You provided for us today and what You're going to continue through this crisis. Let us be Your hand extended. Let us be Your feet a-walking. Help us to help others that are struggling. God, that we have that discernment and rely on your Holy Spirit, God, for the guidance and direction in our lives. Lord, we thank you for those that they said that prayer, God, and trust in you, Heavenly Father. God, with you, all things are possible. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and we give you almighty praise. In Jesus' name, amen.